Hi, my name is Chow. I'm currently a Chief Pharmaceutical Officer's Clinical Fellow at NHS England. Today, I'm going to talk about my motivations for application, how I approach my application, and give you some insight into my fellowship so far and some of the projects I've been working on at NHS England. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. I've put my Twitter handle on the screen. Prior to this role, I was a teacher practitioner at UCL School of Pharmacy, teaching MPharm undergraduates about pharmacy practice and policy. My background is in community pharmacy, working for a very innovative and forward-thinking company that promoted and nurtured pharmacists delivering clinical services and utilising our expert knowledge in medicines. I'm an MPharm graduate from the University of Nottingham. I was very keen to apply for this scheme after seeing some of the amazing work the previous fellows got up to. One of the main reasons I applied for the scheme was to gain an unparalleled opportunity to work with senior leaders in the NHS. I would consider myself an early careers pharmacist and I'm constantly amazed during my fellowship to be able to work alongside chief pharmacists, experts and pioneers in pharmacy during such a pivotal and dynamic time for pharmacy. I wanted to see pharmacy from a different perspective. I've only worked at a local level working as a frontline clinician, but did not have the knowledge or understanding on how decisions are made at a national level and wanted the opportunity to be in the room where decisions are made that influence and shape future health policy. One of the key reasons I wanted to work at NHS England was to have the opportunity to contribute to projects which improve patient care at scale. On a personal level, I wanted to develop my leadership skills and experience. It's a completely different pace compared to service delivery. My work this year has required more strategic thinking, project management, and better understanding of stakeholder engagement. The fellowship is also wonderful because I get to be part of a multidisciplinary cohort of fellows. Our pharmacy fellow cohort is amazingly supportive, but we also get to work collaboratively with the medical, dental, sustainability and regional fellows also. It's going to be an insightful but challenging year, completely different to anything I've done so far. I would encourage everyone listening to this webinar right now to apply. It's a once in a career opportunity and take some time to think about your application to make sure it's as competitive as possible. Before sitting down to write the many drafts of my application, I first reflected on my career journey so far. I thought about my biggest contributions to clinical practice and things that I was most proud of. I also looked at the FMLM person spec for this role to see what qualities they were looking for in a fellow. I then made sure to highlight those qualities in my application form. I just want to encourage all pharmacists, regardless of which sector you work in, to apply for this scheme. You do not need to have a certain work background to be a successful fellow, as we're all going to be out of our comfort zones. So this year, I'm split across two directorates within NHS England, so I'm working on lots of different but also related projects. I'm working with the Pharmacy Integration Fund in a primary care team. This is the team responsible for accelerating the integration of pharmacy professionals across healthcare systems and clinical pharmacy services into PCNs. Some of the work streams the Pharmacy Integration Fund are supporting include pharmacy independent prescribing, CPCS, supply of contraception and community pharmacy, the hypertension case finding pilots and many more. As a clinical fellow, I am supporting my colleagues in developing the clinical strategy for community pharmacy, working on a massive project to create a new clinical service in community pharmacy, which includes liaising with colleagues in the Department of Health, writing service specifications, organising meetings with stakeholders and presenting this project to clinical reference groups and the pharmacy oversight group to gain approval. I am also part of the Independent Prescribing Oversight Group, which aims to provide strategic advice and governance oversight of the Independent Prescribing Programme. I was also able to speak on behalf of NHS England at the Pharmacy Show, a national conference on a key NHS England policy. The other team I'm working with is the Antimicrobial Resistance Workstream. Here I'm working on projects which raises awareness of prevention and control while supporting expert pharmacists and clinicians to reduce inappropriate prescribing of antibiotics. I'm working with a medical fellow on designing a toolkit for recurrent infections and piloting this toolkit in PCNs. I'm also involved in conducting evidence reviews and supporting campaigns on raising awareness of global antimicrobial resistance during World Antimicrobial Awareness Week and beyond. 
It's also important to make the most of the fact that I'm a clinical fellow this year, which will give me lots of access to learn from senior leaders. Our fellows have regular meetings with the Chief Pharmaceutical Officer David Webb and his deputies. I work in the London Wellington House NHS England offices and it's pretty surreal sitting a few desks down from David Webb himself. I'm also invited to attend regional chief pharmacist meetings and can learn about their challenges such as dealing with the vaccination rollout, handling outbreaks and medication shortages. As fellows, we also have access to FMLM training, including monthly study days. We're also working on a group project together. As fellows, we can also get involved in inclusive pharmacy practice, working to make the workplace more inclusive for pharmacy professionals to improve health inequalities. I hope I've been helpful in giving you some insight into my own motivations and experience of the fellowship so far. Like I said at the beginning, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions about the scheme. I'd highly encourage whoever is listening to apply. It's a wonderful opportunity for personal and professional development. Gita Singh, and I'm really excited to be able to share my journey with you as a clinical fellow to the Chief Pharmaceutical Officer within this FMLM program. So I thought maybe I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself uh, and my career path prior to applying for the program, what my motivations of applying for the program were, the actual application process and how I went about it, and also finally how life on the scheme has been. So we start a little bit about myself. Um, as you can see from the top left picture, um, you will see the Malaysian Twin Towers. So I'm a very proud born and bred Malaysian. Um, I studied most of my life in Malaysia, including primary school, high school, and also uh, my A-levels uh, before I moved to the UK and did my MPharm degree in the University of Nottingham. T towards the end of your MPharm degree, you normally need to make a career path choice. And for me, community pharmacy was an absolute passion. So I'm very proud to say I did my summer placement and also um, pre-registration training with Boots. During my time there, I moved up the ranks and um, assumed different roles, uh, be it from relief pharmacist role to uh, a pharmacist store manager role across different settings, such as the high street, um, surgeries and also care homes. From here, I moved on to my next career path um, and I had a very fulfilling role uh, within Well Pharmacy. I was able to work in the superintendent's team as a patient safety and experience pharmacist for a number of years before I decided to move on to my next career path and I wanted to take the plunge. And that this is the point where I applied for the Chief Pharmaceutical Officers Fellowship Program. To apply for this program, it is a rather personal question, but I wanted to take some time um, prior to applying for this program to think about what I really wanted to achieve from the perspective of personal growth. I think often in our careers, pharmacists, uh, we are model professionals in our day to day jobs. For example, in community pharmacy, we're very good at looking after our patients needs. Uh, we equip ourselves with the professional knowledge and business acumen to be able to thrive in our career paths. So I wanted to take some time uh, to move away from the front line and reflect on my own personal growth and my values. I wanted to hone in on my leadership skills. I wanted to observe behaviors of leaders and top organizations. And I really wanted to challenge myself to work in an environment of a career that is completely out of my comfort zone, which this opportunity with this would present with different host organizations. So this program as well provides a really cohesive environment to achieve what I really wanted in terms of personal growth, because it has been designed for this very purpose. Secondly, it was really important for me to um, ensure sector representation. So I feel in community pharmacy, we are in a very unique position to be able to witness firsthand the challenges that health inequalities can cause to population health. I wanted to ensure there was a voice for community pharmacy at national level to be able to influence and contribute to national strategy. My third reason was I really wanted to understand how an idea could grow from a seed to being implemented at national level. So this opportunity would have provided me with the understanding of the intricacies of leadership uh, and how to navigate um, any sort of politics that you may come across by shadowing the best in the business. 
And lastly, it was the once in a lifetime networking opportunity. So in this role, what you will find is you will be able to meet with colleagues, colleagues in senior leadership roles of national organizations with such a rich amount of experience who are ready and willing to share their wisdom and experiences with you. So this was going to be the perfect opportunity for me to learn. And that is one of the main reasons why I applied for this program. In terms of how I approach my application, I first started by attending the uh, About the Scheme webinar. Um, so this was attended by current fellows who shared their experiences. And I um, recall taking down some notes um, and understanding some of the similarities I had with some of the fellows and their experiences. Um, I then reached out to some of the fellows and you will find that most of us are ready for you to do this. So you will find my Twitter feed there and I'm happy to, to share um, how I'd gone about the application process. I also ensured that um, I read the application specification in detail. So with that, I took some time to reflect on my experiences till date and how my personal motives and values align with the specification before I meet and wrote the application. How has life been in the scheme so far? Um, so I'm a clinical fellow at NHS England Transformation Directorate and I've been having a really good time. I've had the, an amazing opportunity firstly to, uh, to be chairing our monthly e-prescribing webinar. So these webinars are designed to accelerate digital transformation, uh, reduce unwarranted variation, and also deliver quality improvements. So I've had the opportunity to uh, build on my networking and find the right cohort of speakers uh, to attend these webinars, uh, which has been a really great experience. Um, we've also had the opportunity in the fellowship to attend uh, meetings at national level. So that includes the pharmacy advisory group, um, some of the IPP work. Um, and Currently, I have uh, regular catch ups uh, and coaching with my mentor, who is the uh, Associate Chief um, Clinical Information Officer of NHSE. Um, he's also uh, a clinical fellow, the first ever clinical fellow. So it kind of shows you the opportunity that um, this program can bring in terms of where you can progress in your career. Um, currently, we also are, um, I also have a personal project uh, to be working on, uh, and this personal project. Uh, it's a great experience of growth in terms of understanding how I can impact on a national level. So uh, I'm acquiring skills such as setting up steering groups, engaging the right stakeholders and doing a user research piece as well. Within FMLM, um, you also have the opportunity to interact with the other fellows, so the National uh, Medical Directorate or the dental fellows. And one of the highlights for me has been um, the session that they did in terms of politics, power, persuasion and partnership. So this uh, was a session uh, designed, a role play session designed for all of us to work together and, and understand really the first hand experience of the complexities within politics and the medical medical sphere. So we had to assume different roles, whether it was you were from an NHS trust or UNMP or local councils and how you interact with the media. It was a great opportunity to understand how our views may not align and how we mutually need to come to an agreement for the greater good of the public. So this was a really good experience and I don't think it's something that you would you would get in a in your day to day job. Um, lastly, um, I've also had the opportunity to work in a group project um, and each of the fellows within the program bring a different skill set and we are able to collectively work to deliver towards an objective, which has been a really great highlight. So you build a great relationship and friendships with your fellows as well. So my last message would to you would be. I strongly encourage you to apply. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm thoroughly enjoying it and really enjoying the opportunity for personal growth. I'm happy to take any questions from you. Please contact me on the Twitter feed and I wish you the very best in your application process. Hi there, my name is Helen Island and I'm one of the clinical fellows um, and I'm based at the GPHC. Thank you for clicking on this little video to find out more about the clinical fellowship the FMLM offer and why you might be interested to apply. 
So firstly, um, I'll give some, some reflections on um, my experience. So why did I apply? Um, well, firstly, that the programme is very established with a good um, network of um, fellow organi um, host organisations that the fellows are part of. Um, it's uh, in many years of running, so that established programme and that established routine was something that attracted me. Secondly, the um, ability to make an impact both within your own host organisation and also um, uh, within the organisations and nationally um, was really attractive um, to um, change practice um, for patient care or to change how um, services are delivered or regulation, whatever it may be, but the opportunity to actually change things um, at a, a bigger scale. The third reason was the FMLM training. Um, you know, it is absolutely exceptional with some amazing speakers um, uh, from uh, the UK and abroad um, who um, understand practice, uh, not only, you know, across healthcare um, and the way that the um, training is delivered uh, with a mixture of face to face and online, um, 360 reviews, um, action learning sets. There's just so many different ways. So no matter how you learn and what you may have done before in terms of leadership training, um, absolutely FMLM will provide more to enhance um, what you've done. The fourth reason is that I've been in my previous role for many years and I loved what I did before. Um, and I really, you know, the opportunity to take a secondment, to look at things differently, um, to understand the bigger picture um, and um, how I can um, improve what I do, how I do, was really attractive um, for me. And the final point then in terms of motivation was remote working. Um, I've seen this fellowship offered many times, you know, through Twitter and other things and the opportunity to be not so London focused um, and the flexibility with working arrangements um, to be home, to be other places um, was really attractive um, to me. So how did I approach my application? Well, firstly, um, I like to keep my CV up to date and that's just a top tip generally. Um, so I went back to my CV and had a look at what um, I've done and thought very carefully about the questions that um, were in the application form and how I wanted to use different parts of my CV to um, celebrate what I've done. Um, I also looked very carefully at the FMLM resources online, um, so the, the information they have um, to find out more about the, the process and, and um, make sure that I was, um, you know, following um, the job description and things like that. I also thought carefully and did thoughtful responses. Um, you know, it's the type of thing that you may wish to write and then come back to and just, you know, with um, fresh eyes and just see if it can be tweaked or optimised and, and things. I didn't share it with anybody else, but that may be something um, I guess you may wish to do, uh, you know, to, to get another person's opinion. And my final thing is don't leave it to the last minute. I know the deadline is 5 p.m. in, in uh, on the 21st of December, but don't leave it to 5 p.m. or 5 to 5 p.m. You know, um, it, do get it in in good time um, to make sure that you don't have computer failure or anything um, like that. So my second slide um, is about um, my experience so far um, at the GPHC and um, I've been with the GPHC uh, like three, well coming up to three months now, three, just over three months. Um, so firstly, see at a regulator, I've had so much um, experience with what regulation means, how that can be helpful, supportive, as well as um, protecting patient safety. And it's been really good to um, work with and, and get um, ideas from different people within the organisation. And it is multidisciplinary working, but just in a different way. You know, there are lawyers and, you know, comm specialists and, um, you know, data analysts, whereas, you know, in clinical practice, it's OTs and physios, but it's just, it is using a similar skill set, but just in a different, different way. I've been observing some GPHC inspections, which has been great. I went to the National Regulators Conference in Edinburgh um, and uh, did a presentation there, which was that top photo you can see. Um, showing an interest in FTP and um, so fitness to practice, and that'll be part of my project, which I'm really, really excited to, to get involved with. I reviewed some regulator articles for um, fellow you know, co uh, colleagues within the GPHC, which has been really great. Um, and I suggested um, you know, a diagram to help with one of the articles and that came to fruition. So I was very proud my diagram was there um, and that's on the screen. 
And I think the other great thing is that I've been able to decide my own project. Um, you know, I've come up with a few ideas, discuss them with my line manager, who's really, really supportive and, and phenomenal um, leader and, and visionary, uh, and sort of worked out how that that um, that my my ideas, how that could fit, not only for my um, learning, but also for the organisations and actually be a meaningful um, project. In terms of skill development, um, I didn't really kind of understand what strategy was and I'm definitely on a, on a learning journey with that. But the opportunity to understand what strategy is and how that is important and how that's developed is, has been a really big learning point for me. Absolutely, my leadership. Um, uh, I've never had any formal training in leadership. So to be able to sort of have some reflection on myself, um, you know, think about the theory behind leadership, how that applies in healthcare has been really good. As I mentioned, the um, multidisciplinary working, so working with others within the GPHC team um, who have um, non-healthcare skill set, but, you know, so much to bring um, to um, healthcare has been really exciting and, and lovely to do. The other big part of the experience so far is the network and and I foresee this to be, you know, not just this year, but for, you know, for our, my career going forward. But, you know, there are 14 fellows across different organisations and the picture there is some of um, some of us with also um, Richard Cattell and Sue Lad, uh, Sue's lads at a, a meeting. But, you know, we have come from all different places in the UK, different backgrounds, different experiences. And it's been really great to um, get to know them, to um, work together um, and share our experiences and extend each other's experience during this year. Um, also, our action learning set. So we have a facilitator who um, uh, will guide us through and help us um, discuss our learning and, and help us really reflect and make the most of, of this um, experience. And those action learning sets are sort of off the job training. Um, so that's been really great. It's also um, the network in terms of the wider pharmacy network. Um, so understanding ICSs and mental health and prisons and, you know, so many different um, areas that, um, you know, you get invited to join or to comment or to observe meetings um, uh, and, you know, feel part of a part of something much bigger. And also sort of broader than that, the kind of wider healthcare network, as I say, as part of the GPHC, we have um, fellows in the Dental Council and the um, medical, General Medical Council. So it's linking with those and thinking about what regulation looks like across different healthcare um, organisations. So as I've highlighted, I would highly recommend this to you. If you're thinking, is this for me, just apply apply um, I really recommend it um, and I've put there my Twitter handle and also my email address so um, if you have any further questions then um, please do um, uh, get in touch but all the best and good luck thank you Hi, my name is Kieran Reynolds and I am the Chief Pharmaceutical Officer's Clinical Fellow at NHS Specialist Pharmacy Service. Specialist Pharmacy Service is an NHS England Commission service which provides advice on buying, selling, making and using medications. We are the first stop for professionals medicines advice and we consist of four hubs, procurement, quality assurance, medicines use and safety and medicines advice. So why did I apply for the fellowship? Well, to understand this, you need to understand a little bit more about me. I completed a BSc farm in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and Dublin before completing a hospital-based pre-registration year in St. James's Hospital in Dublin. I then earned my MPharm degree and registered with the Professional Regulator of Ireland, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland. I then registered with the GPHC and began working as a resident pharmacist in St. George's Hospital in Tooting, South West London. Here I completed my postgrad diploma in general pharmacy practice and it's also the place where I've been working for, as a specialist legal pharmacist for the last four and a half years. While here, I completed my independent prescribing qualification and was independently managing outpatients with hepatitis B and C within hospital and community settings. As a specialist liver pharmacist, I've made significant clinical contributions to the services that I worked in and the patients that I've cared for. And I had a desire to complement these clinical skills with further experience of leadership and management. I was unsure at this stage as to what to do next. Did I continue on in my clinical career and begin credentialing for consultant pharmacist? 
did I want to pursue a fellowship, either the Chief Pharmaceutical Officers Fellowship, Regional or Jersey Fellowships, or did I want to do something else? And after much deliberation, I decided that the Chief Pharmaceutical Officers Clinical Fellowship was the most appropriate scheme for me. And why? Well, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to take a year, an entire year, to develop yourself both personally and professionally. I'd spoken to numerous alumni who had hugely positive endorsements of the skills, knowledges and behaviours which they had picked up throughout the year and the opportunities that it had led them into. I also wanted to challenge something new, something different that I hadn't done before. And as, I'd said, as I've already said, I wanted to further develop my own leadership and management skills. This fellowship also provides an incredible opportunity to network with senior leaders across the country and to see how they get things done and how they make decisions. But there were also barriers. There were feelings of whether I was good enough or had the right or enough experience. There was also concerns of what I, what I would do after the fellowship. If I take this fellowship as a secondment, what happens next? What happens after this? There were also personal circumstances which would be different for every single person. Will you have to move? How would it affect your personal life? How would it affect your salary? And these are all different for each individual. And how did I approach the application? Well, I had a good long hard look at the personal specification and I made sure, made sure that every single point was mapped onto my application at, at some point. Print it out and tick it off as, as you're completing your application. I also spoke to numerous alumni, either via Twitter or LinkedIn, to get their experiences which would, which would help my application. I also got my friends and colleagues to proofread my application to make sure that there were no errors, spelling mistakes or kind of huge omissions and also to edit your responses. The word counts are quite short and you want to make sure that your responses pack a punch. But what does life look life on the scheme look so far? Well, it's been very different to my previous clinical career. I'm now I'm working in a hybrid fashion, both working from home and office space, which I really enjoy. And we've also been um, able to attend numerous educational days and action learning sets on the principles surrounding leadership and what good leader good leadership looks like. Numerous projects that I've been currently working on include an SPS wide work plan where I'm working with senior leaders within SPS to develop a single work plan which we will present to the management board. I've been working with my digital colleagues on development and release of a medication compliance aid or a blister pack compatibility tool which will be launched soon. And I'm also going to start working on some PGDs which will help support the community pharmacy clinical services which will hopefully be rolled out nationally. And I've also been supporting the FMLM recruitment for you guys for next year. And SBS is a really great place to work. It's full of supportive and uh, supportive colleagues who are both uh, supportive both personally and professionally. I've been provided with numerous one-on-ones to help develop myself personally and professionally. And I'm a hugely valued member of the SBS family. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the um, fellowship, um, fellowship months. If you have any questions or queries or want to simply reach out and ask, ask anything, my Twitter handle is here and I'd be happy to help. Best of luck with the application and look forward to hearing from you soon. Hello everyone uh, and thank you for having me. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Sarah Dunford and I'm the current clinical fellow, um, current Chief Pharmaceutical Officers Clinical Fellow at the Care Quality Commission, the CQC. Um, uh, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about um, why I applied for the fellowship and about my motivations for applying and a bit about what I'm doing now, uh, just about two and a bit months into my fellowship. So a bit of background about me. I um, studied pharmacy at the University of Nottingham and I graduated in 2014. Um, I did my reg uh, pre-registration training in hospital um, and I basically developed my career as a hospital pharmacist. I was a resident pharmacist and then progressed um, and my most recent role before um, starting the fellowship was as the lead pharmacist for general medicine and um, I also worked in medication safety. So yeah my background is basically predominantly all in secondary care and I've had a bit of experience in intermediate care but quite focused in secondary career care career as a hospital pharmacist um, and I found out about the fellowship through a friend who sent me the link to the application um, and for me it just seemed like an excellent opportunity to develop my career um, how often do you get a year to develop your leadership skills um, and to work in an arm's length body and be exposed to what is going on at a national level. Um, and for me, it just seemed like the, uh, the perfect chance to work on my what my leadership style was and how I was going to develop in a leader uh, whilst in that supported environment and surrounded by other leaders working at national level. Um, 
so yeah, the opportunity to shadow senior leaders in a working in their day to day roles. Um, and it just it just seemed like a once in a lifetime career opportunity. Um, and I also saw it as a huge opportunity to push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, I've always liked to try and challenge myself as I progress through my career. And this really felt like a really big challenge. Um, and it's nice to have the opportunity to do something which is stretching, stretching you, um, which you're not necessarily 100 percent comfortable with doing. So for me, I'm quite an introverted person, so stretching myself into networking with new people and really pushing myself out of my comfort zone um, and trying to develop um, my leadership skills in that space. Um, and then I think for me, I just really wanted to see. Um, I just saw this fellowship as a huge opportunity to see what the bigger picture of healthcare was. I felt like in the roles I had been doing up to the fellowship, I'd been quite um, narrow minded in my view of healthcare. I'd been focused in secondary care and I'd only really been exposed to population of South East and South West London. Um, and it, this gave me the opportunity to see what's going on at a much larger scale across the country, to be able to see what's happening in all healthcare systems, in, in adult social care and independent care, independent health and in primary care. And it just it just develops and widens your understanding of, of the, the picture of healthcare um, and an opportunity to see what's actually going on. And alongside that, um, being able to have an impact to patients at a wider scale. So some of you might be thinking, well, I don't know whether I want to apply for this fellowship because um, I'll be leaving that clinical care that I normally give to patients and I'll be leaving that behind. But um, for me, it's actually um, widens that opportunity to have an impact on patient care, but um, have an impact, impact on patient care nationally. And actually by some of the stuff that you can do during the fellowship can have a huge impact on the care of patients all across um, all across England and some of the organisations all across the UK and the dissolved nations. Um, so yeah, a bit about like the barriers. So, um, so these are some of my barriers, my personal barriers for applying. They may they may resonate with you, they may not. But um, one of the barriers I had was whether I actually had enough experience for the role. And I think that's probably quite common. Um, and perhaps you might not be at the top stage of your career and you're not an expert in what you're currently doing. Um, and you might question whether you've got enough experience to apply for the fellowship because of that. And I'd say if you've looked at the application scheme, you looked at the person spec and you've got this far, then then just apply and see how you get on. Um, as a cohort of clinical fellows, we're all at different stages in our careers and have had different experience today in different pathways. And that just adds to the diversity of the group. Um, and so actually it doesn't you don't need there's not a set amount of experience you need to be able to apply for the fellowship. So um, just bring yourself and bring what experience you have to date uh, and you can apply that to to the fellowship year. And again, you might think whether you've got the right skills uh, for the fellowship. So, for example, you might not know what the CQC does or what the GPHC does or what the UK, what UK HSA do. You might not know everything about those organisations, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. You don't need to know everything about all the host organisations to be able to apply. You'll you'll have the opportunity to learn and develop as you go on through the fellowship. So don't let that be a barrier to you for applying. Um, and then if you want to contact me or any, I'm sure any of the other fellows, then um, that's my Twitter handle is just there. Happy to be contacted about um, whether to apply or a process of application. Um, and in terms of the process of the um, the application, I would just say um, have a look through your personal specification and make sure um, that what you're writing reflects the person's specification. And also just give honest and open examples of your leadership um, and where you've impacted services. Um, it's not about having the best example of of leadership, but it's about how you, you you've reflected on that and what you've done in that role. Um, so moving on to where I am now, um, so just about two months into the fellowship, um, so I've started working on quite a few things, but obviously things will progress as the year goes on. So this is just a sort of snapshot on, of some of the stuff I've been involved with so far. So um, inspections, are obviously um, a core part of what the Care Quality Commission do, um, and sort of the bread and butter of what, what um, CQC do as a regulator. 
so I've had the opportunity to go out on some inspections and, and travel um, to different parts of the country to inspect services um, and as part of some of the inspections I've been doing I've been able to work on a pilot project looking at medicines optimization as a core service of inspection um, and I have I will be going next week on the second inspection uh, and involved in that pilot project. I've also had the op opportunity to inspect independent health service um, and just it just uh, um, gives you that insight into what's going on in different healthcare providers, especially when you've um, perhaps only experienced one sector of healthcare like I had before I uh, joined the CQC. Um, Project lead and project man management, I've just kind of grouped those together. I've um, also been doing some work with health inequality um, and that kind of ties in a little bit with collaboration. Um, as the group of Chief Pharmaceutical Officers Clinical Fellows, we um, have been collaborating with NHS England, working on inclusive pharmacy practice, and we've also been working together to look at inclusivity in the fellowship. Um, so networking um, is obviously a huge part of what we've been doing this during the fellowship. So I've had the opportunity to network with um, loads of individuals within the CQC and experience what different people's roles are within the CQC, but also to network outside of the CQC with different healthcare providers, with NHS England. Um, and you're not necessarily confined to your host organisation and you have the op opportunity to network outside of that. Um, and then senior leadership meetings, just the opportunity to sit on meetings that you wouldn't normally observe, um, not normally be able to observe and see how people's different leadership styles are, um, see what decisions are made at a national level that you know then it will impact services further down the line. Um, and it just um, is such a unique opportunity to be able to sit in on those meetings and to see what's going on. And it just broadens your understanding of healthcare services um, and uh, what's going on at a national level. So yeah, that's just a little snapshot about what I've been going up, going up, being getting up to. So thank you very much for listening. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Allen, and I am a clinical fellow this year with the Royal Pharmaceutical Society. I have included my Twitter details, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions or put you in touch with someone who's working at an organisation that you're interested in, for example. So please do get in touch. Just to explain a little bit about my personal background and my motivation for applying. Um, I feel that now is a great time of change for the NHS. We're moving out of COVID and moving into COVID recovery. I think there's lots of changes coming in terms of ICS level working and people are refining how we're doing things. And there's technology such as pharmacogenomics coming, which pharmacists are ideally placed to be leading on. And I think all of these really were making me think, actually, I want to be a part of that. I want to be leading it. And I was at a stage in my career where I felt that actually I really needed to build on my leadership skills. In terms of my personal motivations, um, so I've worked at the same trust in the northeast of England since I qualified. Um, I've done various roles and various postgraduate qualifications. I was the lead pharmacist in haematology. I've also acted as the accountable pharmacist for the Trust Septic Unit. And my most recent role before applying to the fellowship scheme was as an advanced clinical practitioner in haematology. So I've moved back into a more clinical role. But actually, I felt that the next step was to really look at how we work on a national level. And because I'd always been in hospital, I wanted to un understand more about the wider pharmacy world. I wanted to learn more about the sectors of primary care, community pharmacy, and I felt that that would make me a more rounded practitioner. So I felt that this scheme would tick a lot of those boxes. We do get a chance to work at a national level. You get a chance to build those networks and link in and find out that information. And for me, I felt that it was the next natural step in my career particularly as I'm potentially looking at doing my consultant portfolio in the near future. So I knew some people who had done the fellowship previously and they'd found it really inspiring and life changing. And um, so I spoke to them and found out more about their experiences. I'd also discussed it with colleagues to um, make sure that um, they would second me from the role, for example. That was quite important to me personally. Um, and there's lots of information on the Clinical Fellows website. So there's information packs and job specifications. And I made sure to align my application with those points and um, in the hope that it would be a successful application. 
really I wanted to build on my um, communication, my networking skills, to learn more about the wider world of pharmacy and to be in a position to be leading some of the changes that I felt were coming up. So life on the scheme so far, we started in September and there has been a period of adjustment. It's a big change for me. Um, I'm mainly working from home this year. Um, I do go to the RPS offices in London every so often, um, but that's been a big change coming from a hospital environment where I'd be going in, doing clinics and, and working with a team every day. Um, so that has, has been a change, but we've all sort of found that and we've all been quite supportive of each other and, and kept in touch as, as the weeks have gone on. Um, I've had a chance to be involved in some national projects already, which is excellent. Um, so part of the work that I'm helping with is the Royal Pharmaceutical Society's Vision for England, which is due to be launched very soon. Um, and I've had a chance to lead on webinars. I've um, been pulling together some of the consultation responses and developing some of the content that is actually going to be in the vision. So that's been a great experience. We also get a chance to do a fellows project. So the whole team of us are doing a project and um, you get opportunities as, as um, the year goes on to get involved in other collaborative project, projects that may be outside your host organisation. So there's some great um, opportunities there. We've had various opportunities to um, demonstrate our leadership. So I'm one of the recruitment leads um, this year, myself and another fellow have taken that on, but we also get training in leaderships. We've had some excellent um, all fellow education sessions with the dentist fellows and with the medical fellows, for example. Um, and they have made us think about how um, external influences such as politics and the government link in with the NHS and, and how that is influenced. And we've got other upcoming days to de really develop our leadership skills and get that exposure that you wouldn't have in your normal organisations day to day. We have a number of other education sessions on and um, a lot of this is about networking and building relationships and you've really got to make the most of the year. So we as fellows have invited guest speakers to, to come and talk to us to learn about their leadership journeys, learn about their priorities for the NHS or for their roles. And everyone has been very, very welcoming and we've really benefited from that time from those expert speakers. Um, we also have an ALS group, so an action learning set. We've been split into two groups this year. And that is a safe space where we can develop our coaching skills to help each other with problems that we may have. We also get a bit of teaching through that. And it's just really a supportive group um, as the year goes on to, to make sure that we're all getting the most out of the year, really. I found it great. It's been one of the best things I've done. Um, I think it's just going to go very, very quickly. Um, there's lots of exciting projects in the pipeline, things that I would never have had the chance to do in my own organisation. And I'm very much meeting the things that I wanted to do in terms of the fellowship. So, um, you know, I've had experience of um, primary care, and community pharmacy, that was totally outside of my comfort zone before. Um, and we get a chance to go along to national meetings and find out what the priorities are. And I think that just makes you a much more rounded practitioner, a better pharmacist, and able to lead a team better when you go back to whatever role you then end up going to. So i um, really pleased I did the scheme, enjoying it so far, and um, looking forward to answering any questions you may have. Hi everyone, my name is Aileen O'Hare and I was the Chief Pharmaceutical Officer at the General Pharmaceutical Council between 2021 and 2022. Um, I've been asked to come along and talk about my experience of the scheme um, and I'll also um, share a little bit about what I've been doing after the scheme. So first and foremost, I just want to say that I loved every minute of the year um, and the fit clinical fellowship scheme. It, I built confidence, I built networks, and I built a much greater understanding of the wider healthcare system. I think I've developed a network of peers um, who will be my enduring support network throughout my leadership career. And I think I've particularly enjoyed working across all of the health and care host organisations. And I've, I've got a much deeper understanding of their role and their remit um, from just the, 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 all the different sessions that I attended. Um, 
I think the opportunity to shadow senior leaders um, was priceless. Um, it gives you a real insight into the varied nature of roles. Um, and also it was good to see that not all of them were a straight ladder. Um, and a lot of them maybe has taken sort of a different career path and it was more of a climbing frame than a ladder. And I can really relate to that because my leadership career hasn't been linear. Um, and so it felt um, comforting to know that other senior leaders had been in the same position. So I was really lucky to um, secure Peter Lees, who was at the time the CEO of FMLM um, as my mentor. And I thought, I think it's really useful to have a mentor who isn't actually within your own profession um, because it actually stretches your thinking um, and it helps you to think more strategically and also to think about the, uh, the multidisciplinary approach to, um, to leadership as well. So my host, host organisation was the GPHC. Um, which is obviously the national pharmacy regulator. And that was really useful to work across the devolved nations, to see the differences between the nations, um, and also across different sectors of pharmacy as well. I think I developed a really unique understanding of the different devolved nations, their commissioning contracts, their political drivers, and what influences the sort of pharmacy profession in each one of those countries. From the scheme, I love the politics session, the Westminster politics session, because it really enabled me to understand our, our, our own ability to lobby politicians and to influence parliament and government ministers. And it really shone a light on how closely politics and healthcare strategy are aligned. I really benefited from inputting into national frameworks, into guidance and policy throughout my fellowship year. Um, and I, I, I suppose I got lots of experience um, in, in different types of work. And I think that's really vital as you take on senior, senior leadership positions, you really know how to craft and develop policy and guidance. So and I inputted into the hospital pharmacy standards, um, inclusive pharmacy practice program, uh, the good, a good clinical governance review for the General Pharmaceutical Council and the RPS scope of practice for prescribers. So it was quite a varied portfolio as well. So what am I doing post fellowship? Um, I think I knew quite early on that I'd like to explore a hybrid role um, so that I had a mixture of work and um, sort of um, different aspects to my, my week. Um, so, and I've managed to create a role that is um, a GPHC specialist inspector and also an NHS deputy chief pharmacist. So it's allowed me to sort of continue my GPHC career and, and national work, um, but also to develop an, um, novel and new clinical services within the NHS and across ICSs as well. And that I'm working on is with virtual wards. I really enjoy my GPHC role um, and it will be supporting the development of new national guidance and standards and that will require um, significant stakeholder engagement. And so I'll be utilising that sort of broad network that I've developed over the year as a clinical fellow. And I think they are the real nuggets, golden nuggets is that sort of network of leaders that you can tap into. Um, as part of your role or when needed for advice and guidance. What attracted me to the GPHC role was obviously that national picture and an opportunity to influence pharmacy practice across the UK. The Deputy Chief role um, actually started from a conference presentation that I did on communities of practice and a conversation after. So I think it's really important wherever you go, wherever you present, whatever you do, to always realise that people are watching and listening and senior people are, and there's opportunities that sort of bud out from that and, and, and flower from that. Um, and I suppose what that chief pharmacist wanted was for me to recreate the community practice in his own setting and in his own trust, and that's what I've gone on to do. 
And I'm also working on new and novel services, such as virtual wards, which is really exciting, challenging because no one's done it before. So it's working across ICSs to really learn from each other. And that's another thing that I really enjoy doing. I'm really thinking about integrated care and again, working across different sectors of pharmacy. So that's again, something that's of interest to me. And I've always been interested in integrated care and cross-sector working. And this role has really allowed me to tap into my own key interests. So I think top tips for me are identify and do what you love. You spend a lot of time at work, make it meaningful. Also pay back and support others to develop as well and use your newfound influence for good. Um, share your le leadership and management knowledge. I teach and train others now. So teaching and training others and giving back is a really positive part of what I do and something that is um, really meaningful for me. So that's it. That's my top tips and that's my journey. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm also on Twitter and LinkedIn. So if you ever want to reach out to me, then please um, message me through those platforms.